I understand that maybe you don't get this, Ken, but uh, most of the people who own slaves were, in fact, Christian, Ken. Now, you might say that, oh, they weren't the right type of Christian or they weren't real Christians. They literally used the Bible, and you can still use the Bible, to justify slavery. Jesus never once said slavery was bad. He literally said that slaves should obey their masters. Alrighty. We have not talked about Ken Ham in a hot minute. It has been a very long time since I have taken any time to even give a shit about things that Ken Ham says. Uh, why is your Blizzy so different from that one? Because mine is cute. Blizzy is here, and he is precious. Before we talk about Ken Ham, though, let's go ahead and talk about the fan art section, as it is usually marginally less cringe. First one we have here is from Gioni Hatsune, uh, also known as Gioni the Apostate. They finished, they said they think they finished, uh, and they are going to be doing more Resident Evil Cirrus fan arts. This one literally has uh, the old bonk art that I made for the subathon. Uh, but with Juni getting bonked. I always add, like, really interesting little details to these. Uh, but this one has me as Claire from Resident Evil 2, because during the subathon, I did the Claire playthrough of RE2. So this is awesome. I actually ended up using this for the thumbnail for my Resident Evil 2 video over on YouTube as well, because it just looks neat. The next one made was from Karamba, and again, we have no context. Uh, there's no context given, because that is what Karamba does whenever they post anything. And they, they will probably never change. But it is still awesome. Uh, I actually really like this more realistic approach to the character. Uh, and of course, instead of the beaded necklace that I normally have, we have a single necklace gem. Looks really good. All things considered, Nakibri, thank you for redeeming, uh, not redeeming, for putting in a, a hundred bits. Uh, go buy Blizzy some food. You know what? Let's go ahead and do exclamation mark Blizzy. If you're over on Twitch, uh, you can hit join uh, for a chance to get some net coins uh, by fighting for Blizzy's affections. That's a thing you can do. Anyway, as always, everyone, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future episode, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. If you are on Twitch, the best way to do that is do exclamation mark Discord, and you'll see the link, and you can go in as such. Otherwise, it's in the description below. With all that said, let's get right into the lovely tweets of one Kenneth Hamilton. I feel like I, sl I, I slurred that way more than I should have. But this was the tweet that made me want to do this in the first place. And we have some others that we'll do here in a second. Uh, but who said this? The subject of propagation is interesting to most people and is treated in my paper so that any woman can read it. Charles Darwin, The Life and Letters of Charles Darwin, page 266. Who believed women evolved to be mentally inferior to men? Where's the cancel culture? Remember, Darwin is revealed as the high priest of the religion of evolution, and therefore gets a pass on all his racist and other statements. Okay. So, let's maybe get into some of the problems with this statement. First of all, uh, I like the nod to cancel culture. Can... Cancel culture only works on people who are still alive. I understand that you're not far for this world. I get it. So the difference between what is alive and what's dead uh, doesn't have a lot of weight where you're concerned. But the truth of the matter is, dead people don't really get canceled. Uh, if you would like an example of this, please look at the difference between the treatment of, say, J.K. Rowling, who is alive, uh, and then instead look at, God damn it, why do I always forget? Rainfart. <laughs> Please look at the treatment of H.P. Lovecraft in comparison. Please look at the treatment of anybody who, just in the author space. If you think about it, dead people don't get canceled all that much because canceling dead people doesn't do anything. It does nothing. We talk about them as historical anecdotes because that's all they are anymore. Though I know in your 
in 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 your estimation, they're either burning in hell or or thriving in heaven. Either way, they're not here to be canceled. Secondly, uh, let's talk about the misogyny of Charles Darwin. It doesn't matter. When we are talking about the works of Charles Darwin, we are talking about somebody who is speaking uh, within the realm of a scientific analysis. We are talking about a scientific praxis, uh, practice, looking at what his theories were, where evolution's concerned. His misogyny doesn't matter. His misogyny has no bearing on his science. That said, let's talk about this last part, this high priest part, this weird part here. Evolution's not a religion. It doesn't have any core tenets. It doesn't have any beliefs that are prescribed. It doesn't have any deity, so you don't need deity necessarily for religion. It doesn't have any of that. It's literally just a field in science where we observe uh, speciation. That's it. Evolution is just speciation. That's it. Yeah, this is like saying that Newton is the high priest of gravity. Pizza Turtle has it right there. It's... It... It... it, it doesn't fit any of the tenets of what you would call a religion. If you're going to say that, oh, well, people believe it, therefore it's a religion, that doesn't mean anything. People believe that the color black exists. People believe the color green exists. Are you going to say there's a religion called green uh, that is not headed by Nick of the Game Apologist, King of Green himself? Because, I mean, uh, uh, you'd at least be consistent with that. So, on every point, this series of tweets is just stupid. Was Charles Darwin racist? Maybe. I don't care. Was he a misogynist? Maybe. I don't care. I don't worship him as a person. I don't worship him in any regard. I respect the validity of his theories, and I enjoy the fact that we've been able to have a lot of medical science grow uh, because we've actually used evolution as the backbone of modern biology. And we use it because it fucking works, Ken. But none of that has any bearing on any particular moral failings. Green doesn't actually exist. True! Green does not exist. Whatever moral failings that Charles Darwin had, they just don't fucking matter. Not when we're talking about evolution, the science. To argue so would be to fall into uh, a, a genetic fallacy. Now, let's go ahead and go to the next one. Uh, this one is, they're all going to be from Ken Ham. We're going to be going through a lot of Ken Ham tweets today. Uh, green doesn't exist. Yes, word architect. Colors don't exist. Wavelengths exist. Our brains interpret them as colors, but the colors don't exist. Your green is not my green, but the wavelengths are the same. That's the constant. That's the thing that exists. But the actual color isn't real. Colors themselves aren't a thing. Should we be shocked that people like this uh, celebrate the death of children in their mother's wombs? Well, as God states in his word, all who hate me love death. All right. So what's he talking about? Let's look at the actual uh, article here. The article's called Abortionist Says It Feels Great to Kill Babies in Abortions. That is one hell of a title. That is one hell of a title. Let's see what the uh, actual actual article says uh it's from life news now as always when we're looking at news let's go ahead and go life news media bias fact check let's go ahead and check out uh, if there's a particular bias that this website might have and uh okay so we have an almost extremist right-wing bias on the political side of things and a very low rate of factual reporting Boy, howdy. We've got a wonderful source here, Ken. Gee, I wonder, could there possibly be any problems with using a source like this to base literally anything you say on? Could there be any issues at all? Potentially? Well, let's see here. Let's actually read it. Let's not just dismiss it based on the fact that it's apparently wacky kooky commentary. Let's actually read some bits of the article. Robin Tucker never sees many of the women who she prescribes abortion drugs to. Oh, the, the drug, the pills? Hold on. Let's go ahead and check. Um, when do abortion pills work? Uh, the abortion pill is a common name for two different medicines used to end a pregnancy. 
First, you take a pill called uh, Mispertone, and then you take another pill. Uh, da, 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 da. For people who are eight weeks pregnant or less, it works about nine. Uh, it works a, a lot. So hold on, it only works on people who are under eleven weeks pregnant. Oh, this is fucking fine. Who cares? Who cares at this point? This is... Fetuses are barely formed at this point. Why should I care? Why should I care? But let's continue. Um, some of them she doesn't even talk to. The Maryland abortionist just reviews their online request forms, takes their money, and mails the abortion drugs to the addresses given. No counseling the woman about her options beforehand, no follow-up visit afterwards, no way to contact Tuffer if the woman suffers serious complications after normal work hours. Okay. So let's let us let us let's line by line before we get back to uh, Ken Ham for fun. Line by line. No counseling about the options beforehand. If you are a woman and you are considering abortion, I guarantee you, you already considered your options. It's what led you to this one. Because abortion is an option. Uh, also, Delta, thank you for redeeming your points for an... Ada, ada. You fucking monster. You absolute degenerate. Uh, no follow-up visit afterwards. Um, you're... You're literally just trying to yeet us a fetus. Why do you need a follow-up visit here? It's it's a it's a take a pill, miscarry, boom. You, you, you had your fetal baby cannon, you fired it away. Uh, and then, if the woman suffers serious complications after work hours, this is what doctors are for. You can just go to the hospital. Now, I know that that's a hard thing for most people in the United States to do in general, because our healthcare system kind of blows ass, but... I, I don't see this as much of a reason to, to care. Now, the title makes me think that we have somebody walking around with a machete just fucking murdering babies left and right. Oh, my God. She says it feels great to kill babies. Oh, God, that's horrible. But no, she's literally just mailing pills to people. She's literally just mailing pills that work on fetuses that are, again, in the very early stages of pregnancy. Why, why? Why do I care? Why is this the thing that I care about? It's not. So when Ken Ham says, should we be shocked that people like this celebrate the deaths of children? They're, they're not. They're not celebrating the deaths of children. They're just happy that women are free to do what they want to with their body. That, okay. That's fine. There's no fucking issue here, Ken. You're making a mountain out of a molehill. Besides, let's go ahead and talk about the real awkward thing here. Um, Ken, you're a young earth creationist. Uh, I believe that in young earth creationism, at least in that version of evangelical Christianity, the age of accountability is a thing. So um, if a child gets aborted, that's a one-way ticket to heaven. That's a saved soul, Ken. That's a kid going straight up to the pearly gates. Why the fuck is that a problem? But let's go ahead and continue. Let's go to the next tweet here. So Fox News uh, has an article here. Uh, Father's Catholicism. Uh, no, age of accountability is a thing in evangelical Christianity. Christians uh, point to genetic breakthroughs to show Adam and Eve are not... We'll have to read the actual article, apparently. That Adam and Eve are not incompatible with evolution. Okay, um... So Adam and Eve are incompatible with evolution because genetic bottlenecking is a thing, but let's let's, let's ignore that. Ow, why? The person who... Okay, you know what? Let's talk about abortion for one more second. The person who invented autoplay should have been aborted. The person who invented autoplay on websites should have been an abortion, or at least a cum scrape. Whenever somebody says, what if, they're, what if they potentially cure cancer? My answer is, what if they potentially make autoplay on websites? That's my counter argument, and I'm sticking with it. So apparently, uh, genetic breakthroughs, something, something. Uh, I guess Adam and Eve are not incompatible, according to some Christians who want to square science with their religion. And you know what? I would rather you square science with your religion than hijack it like Ken Hem and Kant Hoven have. But let's see what he says here. What he's doing is nothing new. It's the same old attempts many others have made over the years to come up with new creative ways of trying to fit man's religion of evolution into God's word in Genesis. Just another example of the devil's temptation. In Genesis 3, for man wanting to be God. As the professor stated, we are finding a better way forward, a story to tell. In other words, his story is better than God's, uh, than God's clear account in Genesis. 
His anti-biblical ideas in this article are the same basic ideas that William Lane Craig has also been promoting. Oh, we got crossfire. We got some Kenham crossfire at William Lane Craig. Ooh, let them fight. Put them in the arena. I care not who comes out. And then, of course, he's got a thing from Proverbs here. Okay, so look, here's the thing. Ken... I, I think, as was demonstrated very thoroughly in your conversation with Bill Nye the Science Guy, of all people, you have no fucking idea how evolution works, or you do understand it and you have a, a, a grift you have to maintain to pretend that you don't. Either way, doesn't matter to me, the end result is you peddle pseudoscience. Uh, you literally have a giant arc up in Tennessee or Kentucky, I don't remember which one, uh, where you pedal this pseudoscience. I do not care what your opinions are on said science because you do nothing but actually peddle that pseudoscience. But we have the same claim here of, hey, I guess uh, evolution's a religion, apparently. Also, see you, Pizza Turtle. Get some good sleep. Work is important. You gotta sleep. Thank you for hopping into the stream. Look forward to seeing you again. But then we have the bit about, oh, it's the devil's temptation. Literally, if we have more people uh, who are converted to Christianity uh, because there are teachers who are willing to actually square the science with their religion instead of trying to deny it or create a different field of science entirely that's not fucking real, then isn't that better for you, Ken Ham? That's literally lost souls that are going to heaven, other words. Like, you don't have to believe that evolution is false to go to heaven, right? Even Kent Hovind doesn't believe that. So would I ever visit the Ark Encounter? Only if I could do it with some good friends. What's more important for any of us? Fame, fortune, or health? Actually, none of them. Ah, yes, Ken Ham, famously not worried about fortune. Your soul and where you will spend eternity is what is most important. It's a vital. As Jesus warned, for what does it profit a man to gain the whole world but forfeit his soul? Ah, yeah. So, I like this quote, but not for the reasons you think. See, Ken Ham takes this quote literally, like, hey, what does it profit a man if they gain the world but they, they don't go to heaven? That's the way he interprets it. As an atheist, I interpret this as uh, a very lovely nod to anti-capitalism. I mean, that's not what the intention of the authors was uh, was originally, but who the fuck cares about the author's original intent when it comes to the Bible? A Ken? Because what does it profit a person to gain everything in the world, but actually be harming everyone in the process? Becoming an immoral bastard. Or, in other words, forfeiting your soul. I mean, that's how I would like to view this one. Uh, but this is Ken just trying to say that uh, no, you should be most imp you should be most concerned with being saved. Okay, cool. Well, most Christians would say that they're saved. Now they have to worry about fame, fortune, and health. That matters a lot. And uh, more importantly, let's look let's look at the health one for a second. What matters more, fame, fortune, or health? Well, if you're famous, you can probably bring more people to Jesus, right, Ken? Feels like that would be a really important thing. Uh, health, if you're dying, it could be really hard to spread the gospel. Uh, and if you're dying, that's literally a ticking clock in case you're a sinner who hasn't actually been saved yet. Even if I look at this not as an atheist, this still looks stupid. This still looks stupid. But let's continue. We have one more here. So this is in response to an article that says that the new New York governor declares racism a public health crisis. Now, the reason that they did this, and I've read the article before actually going into this, the reason they did this was to try to make systemic issues in racism, things that we can actually look at, measure, and understand. Uh, not just, hey, a couple of cops were racist, but hey, no, there are racial trends in certain things that we need to address. By declaring something a public health crisis, whether you think this is an effective way of doing so or not, it does put racial issues into a category where they do have to be addressed more on a national level. Uh, specifically, some of the things that they were talking about were uh, a need to try to get better education for racial minorities uh, because of the previous issues we've had with redlined areas where racial minorities were not able to get access to better education because of funding that you know, as I've talked in about videos where I've talked about CRT, uh, where issues that stemmed all the way from the fucking 30s led to those areas being very racially divided. And then, of course, people not being able to get access to higher education or at least better education in the K through 12 government funded area. 
because they were stuck going to schools that were underfunded because their families for generations were unable to get out of said underfunded areas. Turning it into a public health crisis uh, would be a way of handling that. Now, do I think that's the most effective way? I don't know. I don't know because I don't know all the inner mechanics of how that works. I'm not going to even pretend to think that I am smart enough to handle that one on my own. I'd rather sit back and see what happens. I'd rather look at the end result and see if it was a good or not, good idea or not in hindsight. But Ken Ham looks at this and goes, there is a public health crisis in this nation, a spiritual health crisis. Politicians like this one in New York only fuel racism by such actions. To deal with racism or any other issue, people need to trust Christ for salvation and build their worldview on God's beginning in Genesis 1 through 11 that provides the true history of the human race. And then he doesn't even quote Genesis 1 through 11. He quotes fucking Romans. I have a question, Ken, just out of curiosity, uh, people who owned slaves, were they Christians in the United States? I I'm sure you don't know that because um, you are, as we in the in the racist, racist South would say, you're an immigrant. So why do we care? I'm kidding. I wouldn't actually say that. Uh, but I understand that maybe you don't get this, Ken, but uh, most of the people who own slaves were, in fact, Christian, Ken. They were Christian. Now, you might say that, oh, they weren't the right type of Christian or they weren't real Christians. They literally used the Bible and you can still use the Bible to justify slavery. Jesus never once said slavery was bad. He literally said that slaves should obey their masters. And if you don't think that slavery has anything to do with racism in the United States, then maybe the public education system has truly and honestly failed you. Not you, Ken. I mean, you weren't educated here, which is probably for the best. Uh, the less time you spent in this nation, the better. But people like Ken like to say that their issues are the most important, the biggest issues of all time. So the issues that he brings up from the Bible are going to be more important than real people really suffering right now. Ken believes in the deluded fantasy that were everybody Christian, all the world's problems would be solved. But that's not the case. Even in places that are entirely Christian, let's say your church, there are still social issues and problems and abuses that happen in them. And that's just talking about smaller areas. This gets even worse and compounded when you talk about larger scale issues. But okay, Ken, if everybody were saved, the world would be magically made better. Everybody believing in the same God does not make them stop hating each other because of racial issues. I've seen racist white and black people at each other's throats. And also both be Christian. Racism isn't solved by your 2000 year old book, Ken. I'm sorry. It hasn't worked for the last 2000 years. And it continues to not work in the modern day. That all said, this was just a handful of, uh, of Ken Ham tweets. Just a few of them. Just a small sampling. If you have anything you want to say about any of these tweets, let me know in the comments section below. Because there's always more that can be said than what I cover here in the actual video. Now you let me know what you think. I've already let you know what I think. I think Ken Ham is a doo-doo head. I think he's a big old goofball and a grifter and honestly kind of a piece of garbo. But that's all that's that's all my opinion. And I'm sure somebody's in the comment section is going to come crying about that being ad hominem. No, I think he's a big dumbo is an insult. I have lots of reasons to think he's a big dumbo. Not as cringy as I thought it would be. Hey, it's Ken Ham. The, the, the bar is usually very low. We cleared it, though. We did it together. With that said, as always, everybody, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, let me know in the comment section below. If you haven't, if you, if you did in this video, if you're a first-time subscriber, let me know. Do it. Hit the button, and then go down there and say it, and, and I'll probably wink at you or something. Uh, if you have not done so already, if this is not a thing that you have done, maybe consider heading over, if you want to support the channel and what I do, to cuddlyoctopus.com, where you can type in Cirrus in the search bar, and you can find uh, this thing. 
Uh, the, what, I, what I'll tell you is that I own my cringe. I literally became a VTuber. I own my cringe. And now you can too. <laughs> the Elvis Dragon, thank you for redeeming your points, friend. But, uh, you monster. And with all that said, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting the channel and what I do. And as always, everyone, insert end of video tagline here.